we will start the basic medical virology lectures, which are divided into three lectures. This first lecture will be concerned with the virus structure in details, how to differentiate between viruses and other microorganisms, and the effect of physical and chemical agents on the virus. Viruses are small infectious agents, which are different from other microorganisms. What are the main properties which differentiate these viruses? First time, as clear from this left figure, this is a red blood cell, beside which is a bacteria. When magnifying this bacteria in the second figure, you can recognize the size of the virus in comparison. These viruses are measured in nanometers. That's why they are seen by the electron microscope, not the ordinary light microscope, unlike the bacteria which is measured in micrometers and can be examined by the light microscope. The second difference is the genome. It's either DNA or RNA. Both are never found together. Even it's a classification of the viruses. Viruses are classified according to the genome into DNA viruses and RNA viruses. Also, the viruses have no metabolic activity outside the host cell. There is no ribosomes, no endoplasmic reticulum, so they can synthesize their own protein. Viruses can multiply only in living cells where they direct the host cell metabolism to form new viruses, as will, be, as will be mentioned in details in the virus replication cycle. So, in conclusion, viruses are considered obligate intracellular parasites. The virus structure virus is formed of the genome surrounded by the capsid or the protein coat and in some viruses it might be surrounded by an envelope. Both the nucleic acid and the protein coat form what is known as the nucleocapsid. Nucleocapsid. What is the virion? The virion is the intact virus particle. So, if the non enveloped virus is composed of the genome and the capsid, and in case of the enveloped virus, it's composed of the genome and the capsid and the envelope. We will discuss in details the structure of the virus, starting with the nucleic acid, nucleic acid or the viral core or genome. Nucleic acid is packaged inside the capsid. As you mentioned, it's either DNA or RNA. And it is the structure responsible for infectivity. It might be double-stranded as the first figure or single-stranded as the second figure. As a general rule, DNA viruses are double-stranded except parvoviruses, while the RNA viruses are single-stranded except the rotaviruses. All the RNA viruses have non-segmented genome. One piece. One piece of a genome, except the influenza, the rotaviruses, and the bunia viruses, where the genome is segmented.
Zinkel stranded RNA viruses are either positive sense or negative sense. The positive sense RNA is considered infectious. Why it is considered infectious? Because it acts as a messenger RNA. Acts as a messenger RNA, so there is no need for transcription. And this part will be discussed in details in the replication. Covering the genome, we have the capsid or the protein coat, which encloses the genome. It is formed of subunits named capsomeres. The arrangement of these subunits is responsible for the symmetry or the shape of the virus. Surrounding the genome is important for protecting the genetic material from the endonucleases, from the nucleases of the cell. Also, the capsid is important for attachment to the host cell receptor. Being a protein coat, it includes important antigens, which is responsible for inducing the neutralizing antibodies and activating the cytotoxic T lymphocytes to kill the virus infected cells. So again, the capsid function or importance is the symmetry or the shape of the virus, protecting the genetic material, attachment to the specific host cell receptor, and eliciting the immune response to the virus. As we mentioned, some viruses might be covered or surrounded by an envelope. This envelope is a lipoprotein protein membrane, which is acquired from the host cell membrane during budding from the infected cell. The lipid component of this envelope is derived from the host cell membrane. Why? The glycoprotein component is virus specific. This envelope confers instability on the viruses. That's why the enveloped viruses are more sensitive to heat, detergents, and lipid solvent. And disruption of this envelope leads to virus killing. These virus glycoproteins projecting from the surface of the envelope is important as a target of humoral immune response and important for attachment to the specific host cell receptor. As you remember from the capsid, the capsid was responsible for attachment and eliciting the immune response. When the capsid is covered, how can this envelope virus attach to the host cell, host cell receptor? So it needs the glycoproteins, and this is one of the importance of the glycoprotein is attachment to the host receptor. Now we will give a brief account on virus-like particles, the defective viruses, pseudoviruses, viroids, and prions. Defective viruses, from its name, defective. They lack certain genes required for virus replication. So they can't replicate without a helper virus, which provides the missing function. Although they are as a structure, 
as a typical virus composed of viral nucleic acid and proteins. The pseudoviruses contain the host DNA instead of the viral DNA within the capsid. During the replication and the assembly step which get together the nucleic acid of the virus and the capsid, sometimes the host DNA become enclosed inside the capsid instead of that of the viral. They look like ordinary viruses by the electron microscope. If examined under the electron microscope, they look as the viruses, but they do not replicate. Viroids. These viroids, or the plant viruses, consist of a single circular RNA without a protein coat or envelope. They are not implicated in any human disease. Prions. They are the smallest known infectious particles, composed only of proteins. There is no nucleic acid, there is no envelope, only proteins. These prions are involved in human and animal diseases and will be discussed in details in the CNS module. As regards the shapes of the viruses. First, what determines the shape of the virus? What determines the symmetry of the virus is the arrangement of the capsomeres. Arrangement of the capsomeres. The first shape, the icosahedral or the cubic shape, here the capsomeres are arranged in 20 triangles as apparent in the right figure. Example, herpes viruses. While in the helical symmetry, the capsomeres are arranged in a hollow coil as the mixu viruses and the rabies virus. Viruses are more complicated in structure as the pox virus. Here are the head and tail viruses which look like the sperm as the bacteriophage. Here is a collection of the different symmetry of the virus. Classification of viruses. Viruses are classified according to the envelope into enveloped viruses and non-enveloped viruses. And also classified according to the genome as we have mentioned into DNA viruses and RNA viruses. According to the host, classified into human, arthropod, animal, and plants. And according to the diseases produced by the virus, they are classified, for example, into respiratory virus, enteric viruses, hepatitis viruses, according to the disease. Produced. As regards the reaction to physical and chemical agents, first the physical agents. 
how the virus is affected by high temperature. The infectivity of the virus is destroyed at 50 to 60 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes, except the hepatitis B virus. Low temperature is in the favor of the virus. The virus is stable at low temperature, and most viruses are stored at minus 40, even better at minus 70 degrees centigrade. Some viruses are inactivated by the freezing and thawing process. Lyophilization, which is drying from the frozen state under vacuum, giving the virus in the form of powder, preserves the virus at 4 degrees centigrade for many years. The radiation, ultraviolet radiation, gamma radiation, X-rays, inactivate the virus. Inactivate the virus as it affects the nucleic acid of the virus. As regards the chemical agents, first we have the pH. Viruses are sensitive to acidic and alkaline pH. However, some viruses, as the enteroviruses, can survive the acidic pH as in the stomach. Either alcohol and detergents affect the enveloped virus. They dissolve the viral envelope, leading to inactivation of these enveloped viruses. Oxidizing agents as chlorine, iodine, hydrogen peroxide inactivates the virus. As regards formaldehyde, this formaldehyde destroys the viral infectivity without affecting the viral antigenicity. That's why it's used in preparing the inactivated viruses. So that the antigen is preserved and can elicit antibodies formation, but at the same time, the virus can't replicate and cause the disease. So eliciting the immune response without producing the disease. Salt, magnesium chloride stabilizes some viruses as the picorna and Ryu viruses. These salts are important in the vaccine preparation, as in the polio life attenuated vaccine, which can be maintained potent for weeks at high temperature. As regards the phenols, most viruses are resistant to phenolic compounds. 50% glycerol destroys the bacteria but preserves the virus. That's why it can be used to decontaminate the viral preparations. The last chemical agent is the antibiotic. These antibiotics have no effect on the viruses. As you know, the antibiotics target certain structure in the bacteria. For example, cell wall of the bacteria, cell membrane, ribosomes, which are not present in the virus. So there is no effect on virus.